Hello everyone, welcome to Kiwi's TV, a channel that delves into queer's representation on television and the potential real-world impacts it has. I am an avid TV watcher who is constantly searching for great LGBTQIA content and wanted to share my thoughts with others who love analyzing queer media. This channel is connected to my blog of the same name, so you can feel free to check it out if that's something you'd be interested in. The link is up on screen right now, it will also be in the description. So this is what the homepage looks like. If you get here, you know you found the right thing. And now, moving on to the topic of the video. So I'm going to be explaining how to analyze queer representation in the media. There are many ways to do this, but I just wanted to share the way I usually go about it. So hopefully this will be helpful for you to think more in depth about the queer media you consume and give you some basics to develop your own framework for analysis, because every, the way everyone does this is going to be different. So the first thing you need to do is find a piece of queer TV you would like to analyze. If you watch a lot of LGBTQIA plus content, you probably have an idea on how to find it, or even a list of shows you've been waiting to watch. But if you're having issues, there is a Wikipedia page that has a comprehensive list of TV shows that have queer characters. This is what the Wikipedia page looks like. It has many different lists based on different identities, if there's queer themes in certain episodes, different genres with LGBT characters. I'm not a fan of the fact that they put identities other than lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender into the miscellaneous category right here but at least there is a ton of lists and a ton of options for you to choose from if you're searching for something. So if I wanted to find bisexual characters, I could click this link right here, and it brings you a huge list of bisexual characters in TV shows. So hopefully you'll be able to find something you would be interested in with this website. Once you find your show, you can move into actually analyzing that piece of media. So the first thing I'd like to look at when analyzing queer TV is the number of queer characters and the identities being represented. So there's a big difference between shows with one white gay man that is either straight passing or a walking stereotype, and a show with multiple queer characters with a diversity of identities and personalities. Next, you should take note on whether they are a side or main character. Having one queer character that's a side character doesn't necessarily look great. But if there are multiple queer characters, some being main characters, some being side characters, the representation will probably be more accurate and realistic. So there are obviously cases where this will not be true. One thing I really like to use when analyzing queer TV is the Rito Russo test. Uh, it's a great way to see if LGBTQ plus characters are being represented in a way that is positive. And I'm going to show you a GLAD article that will be linked below that gives more information on this. You can read this article more in depth if you're interested to learn more, but I'm just going to break down the basics that are laid out right here. So there's three main aspects of the Rito Russo test. First, the piece of media must contain a character that can be clearly identified as part of the LGBTQIA community. This first step is the bare minimum, and if you're analyzing queer media, of course it's going to pass this step. So the second aspect is the character cannot be solely identified by their sexual orientation or gender identity. So they must have a combination of traits that have absolutely nothing to do with their identity. And lastly, the character must hold an importance to the plot in a way that taking away their character would have a strong impact on the story. This is where a lot of queer story can lose the ability to pass the Beatle Russo test because they include LGBTQ plus characters as tokens and or comic relief instead of making their existence important to the story. This brings me to my next point of analysis, tokenization and stereotypes. The character or characters may pass the Beatle Russo test but still have something that feels off about them. If there are multiple queer characters that do pass the Beatle Russo test, tokenization is probably not occurring. If there's only one queer character, whether they pass the Beatle Russo test or not, it may be made clear that they are the token queer character. This means the show creators made one character queer to attract queer viewership, not because they wanted to make a queer character. Additionally, characters may be harmful stereotypes that reinforce anti-LGBTQIA plus ideas throughout their portrayals. It is important to note that characters having some stereotypical traits is not necessarily bad. It's just when these stereotypes envelop their character in a way that can have extremely negative real-world impacts. Which brings me to my next point. When analyzing, you should note potential real-world impacts of queer characters. Will they make queer people feel validated? Do they reinforce anti-queer ideas? Will they help people who lack knowledge about queer identity become more understanding and accepting? There are so many different questions you can ask in this step that will be brought forward by the media you're consuming. And always remember to listen to people who share the identities of the characters you're analyzing. Maybe you share that identity, maybe you don't. Just remember to listen to others. So thank you for watching. I hope this gave you a little intro on how to analyze queer media. Please subscribe and hit the bell if you find this interesting and want to hear more. And don't forget to check out my blog. Thank you!